What's up crew? Back to a normal Thursday. We're over at Darren's house gonna cook up some food. I got some mobility for you later on today as well as a little story time about my guitars, but let's get to cooking. Hey, 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 hey. Ow! Tearing up my sweats, bro. You saw a little bit. A little bit. Just the tiniest amount where I can do it. There's not a whole lot going on. Yeah, be real durable. And uh, then I was like, I think I just broke the collar. Darren has entrusted me with cutting stuffed bell peppers. Funny story, I went autopilot and cut the bell pepper incorrectly. I was like, oh crap, wasted a bell pepper. And then three bell peppers later, ah oh, crap, I did it again. Won't be doing that this time. hit record right now. Sun is in the worst spot to, to do this because it's like blah gone, blah gone. All the trees are passing by. What am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> Woo! Oh bless me. Done it in the kitchen. Today was good. Went through everything pretty quickly. Got a lot done. We'll be back in there tomorrow for some uh, packing out and then I'll be able to take my food home and be Bed for the week. God, I'm so stoked about that. Not having that is def devastating. That's an extreme word, but it's how I feel. We've got your okay tip of the day. Now that I gave you the tip to make sure your knives are sharp, make sure you keep those fingers out of the way. So you don't want to be cutting with this holding hand, holding the vegetables. You don't want to be holding those fingers out like this. You want to tuck them back like a claw, and you can hold that vegetable or that fruit well with that claw like that. All five fingers. Just as equally as important as sharpening your knives is keeping your digits away from that newly sharp edge. Newly sharp edged. I am a big offender of this, and he was actually giving me a lot of shit uh, for the way I was chopping because I wasn't I wasn't holding on to the meat like this and chopping like that, but I do have a big grip. The main point is making sure that you keep your fingertips out of the way and your thumb out of the way. So you want to have that tucked back and then create a claw. There's your okay to the day. Hope you enjoyed it. God, my shoulders are still pretty wrecked. They are more recovered and hopefully they will be better by tomorrow since I'm doing King Kong and there's muscle ups, which is heavily shoulders and the cleans and my collarbone still hurts a lot. So that'll be interesting, but let's hit it in the garage with some mobility. This is not my garage, but you know what? It's just as good of a place. Did I bring my ball over here? I did. We're gonna talk specifically about shoulder mobility since it's super relevant. My shoulders are crushed still from uh, doing 300 pound grace. I've been working with a lacrosse ball. This one is a rock ball by rock tape. They still sell them as a pair with one lacrosse ball and one spiky ball. And what's great about, dang it. It is gonna be so much harder to do this. Dylan is very mobile. She is getting around. It is crazy. <laughs> Right, so instead of having to chase after, I'm just gonna include her in this video and sit her on my lap right here, if you guys don't mind. We're gonna talk about shoulder mobility. So aside from being super sore from uh, the workout, it's also just really good to pay close attention to your shoulders. Uh, one of the most common lack of mobility issues is having trouble with that overhead position, being able to go overhead with a locked out elbow and your arm slightly behind your ear. Most of the time, if you go to reach over your head, you either get one of these two. That's a bent elbow because everything's super tight or you're able to straighten your arm but you can't get it past your ear. It's stuck 
right in front of the forehead. <laughs> what are you looking at, Billy? So again, it's either bent elbow or you cannot get it all the way overhead. Okay, so two spots you need to worry about when it comes to shoulder mobility. Um, if you're not able to straighten out the elbow, it's not necessarily going to be an elbow issue. There's not mobility in the elbow, there's only stability. This is a stable joint, shoulder is a mobile joint. You can mash the forearm and you can mash the bicep or the tricep, but ultimately the problem is most likely going to exist somewhere in the upper back or in the chest. Okay, so if you can fix those, your elbow should straighten out a little bit. But the two spots I want you to focus on, if you've got tight shoulders or you have trouble with the front rack or you have trouble getting your head, hands overhead, let's say in an overhead squat or when you're doing presses, is to take that lacrosse ball and you're gonna stick it right in the back of that armpit, right there. If this is the center of my armpit, I wanna go to the back towards that uh, the scap area. There's the muscle called the teres minor. If you wanna Google it so that you can get a better picture of where that exists, probably a good idea. But you're gonna take the ball, you're gonna get it right up in there, it's gonna hurt. If you have a tight shoulder issue, this one's gonna feel like crap. But here's a test to do first. Whether or not you are mobile or you have mobility issues, lay down on the ground, put your hand overhead, and lay it on the ground. Once you've done that, feel it, kind of remember it. Do this, the cross ball right there in the arm, you're gonna Lay down on it, bend the elbow, straighten your elbow, stick your hand behind your head, and then the other one you're going to lay on it. You're gonna lift your shoulder, drop it down. So this is while you're laying on the ground. You can kind of do it on the wall as well, but this is best done on the ground. Once you've done that a couple times, maybe like 10 reps of each of those movements, lay back down on the ground, put your hand over your head, and feel the difference. For me, I felt like my arm was gonna fall through the floor, like it felt so mobile. It's magical what that little guy uh, how much that actually impacts your shoulder mobility. The second thing you're gonna do if that only helps a little bit is take that ball and put it right in the pec, right between the pectoral and the deltoid muscle. That is commonly very, very tight and that's gonna be a lot of the reason why you might feel like you can't get your arm all the way back is because your pecs are a little bit tight. Right here, you can either lay on the ground and you can go stuff like this or you can go arm overhead down to the side and just kinda do a <laughs> What are you looking at? Do like a, a snow angel type thing. You can do that up against the wall. Another great one is going up to a rig upright, putting that ball in between the rig upright and your chest, and then going here. I did that yesterday, you might have seen in the clips. But yeah, that's today's mobility tips uh, for shoulder mobility. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Uh, I will do my best to answer them all and try them out. See how your shoulders feel. Dilly, you have anything to say? Huh? Oh, yeah? Okay. She says, get out there and mobilize. Let's talk about my guitars. I love this lens. It shoots so much better. But sometimes you need the 1018. I'm gonna head into the garage and show you the first two guitars. They're in the garage just mostly because there's not as much space in the house for them and they don't really need to be in the house. I have my favorite guitar in the house. We'll show you that after I show you these two though. So let's go into the garage. All right. So I got my two guitars in here, one acoustic, one electric. It is a Gibson, which is interesting that I would say that it's not my go-to, but it's more of a classic style guitar, that uh, that eight body, I guess I would call it. I'm not a guitar expert by any means. I just like playing them. And like I said, I just wanna get better at playing. So I like this one because it's uh, big bodied, has that deep tone to it usually have to put uh, stronger strings on it so it's harder to play and harder to pick with, but it's definitely not in tune. So I'm gonna tune that real quick like. Yeah, I mean, I don't know enough tunes, but it's definitely, definitely a cool guitar. I like to keep it around. And it's real, it's just classic. I like that classic look, so. The second guitar I have in the guitar. The second guitar I have in the guitar. Hmm. Second guitar I have in the garage. The one that you saw in the background. The BC Rich Warlock, which funny story, my first email I ever created was Warlockman345, and no one ever believes me that it's not because of wizardry in video games. It was because of my guitar. And that was a Hotmail account, too. So, 
There's a little, a little bit of history from me. Put this back on the case. I've had this one for a while, of course, since it is an electric guitar. I have it hanging, hanging via a demon hand from the wall. Thank you, sir. Of course, to play this one, I gotta plug in my amp, which I didn't do ahead of time. Any self-respecting metalhead, or at least that's what I was in high school, has a death metal pedal. That's just so much fun to say, a death metal pedal. Death metal pedal, death metal pedal. I got myself a death metal pedal! <laughs> Clearly I need practice. It's been a while since I've touched that thing. Kind of excited to do this little segment. It's my ovation. This is my favorite for obvious reasons. It is. It's a guitar my dad gave me and it's the highest quality guitar I have and it's just, it's a great guitar for just about everything. So I like this one because it has that really deep tone and great for finger picking, the strings are always light. You can use lighter strings with it. I wish I could sing, but that's something I'm still working on. Here's the can of worms that I wanted to open. I have go-to songs that I can play. I play a lot of Dave Matthews. I've got some random songs that I learned a long time ago. I've got Blackbird. Blackbird singing in the dead of no. So I have several songs that I know how to play, um, but I don't have enough finger-picking songs and just good old strumming songs. I'm asking you to, in the comments below, Give me a song to learn, and I'm gonna spend January learning that song. At the end of it, I'll have a video dedicated to showing either my progress or me having learned the song and playing it. Uh, so this will be a cool way to, to see what we come up with. And every single month, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna learn a new song. Like I said, I wanna become an expert at video, but I still wanna get better at the other things that are in my life, and guitar is one of them, or playing instruments. I wish I could afford to get a drum kit, I wish I could have a bass, I wish I could have all of it, but I got what I got, so I'm gonna practice this. Actually, all of these guitars my dad gave me. My dad is a seasoned guitarist, bassist, banjoist, uh, whatever has strings, he can play it, and he's sort of passed that down to me, which I'm eternally grateful for because I love picking up the guitar and playing a good tune. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you're new, subscribe. If you're not new, hit that like button. Hit it like you've never hit it before. And uh, share this video. Let's, uh, let's grow this crew. And if you'd like to file a complaint or send some positive vibes, leave a comment. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, crew.